All right, let's get started. Um, hmm. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, guys. Thanks for joining in online. Good to see you. I hope you all are doing well. Francis, all good? Nice smile. <laughs> uh, awesome. OK. Um, Great. Uh, so we'll start with chapter three, but let's just pray before we get started. Uh, Father, we submit and surrender ourselves before you, Lord. We come humbly and boldly to the throne of grace. Lord, I pray that even as we learn and study the Holy Spirit, please continue to pour out your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding so that we would understand uh, what we are learning, Father. Um, we'll speak to me, speak through me, I pray. Um, we submit the entire session into your hands, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Great. Awesome. Um, so let's just do a quick recap. Okay. Uh, the subject is called the local church. Uh, of what We are going through the APC publication called the House of God. I hope you all have got a copy of that. Um, feel free to download it for free from the website or I've also shared it on the stream section uh, if you don't have it please get it if you don't have a hard copy make sure you get one um, and, um, and yeah okay so the local church we started looking at it uh, from the from the last class that the church is God's idea isn't it uh, or is it any man's idea oh, why do we say it's God's idea What does he say? So, uh? <laughs> you will build your church. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. So Jesus says that he will build his church, right? Um, and so there are two things that we notice that he says he will build. That means it's his idea. And then he says it's his church. Isn't it? And so we kind of very briefly saw where he takes his disciples to a place called Caesarea Philippi and what that, you know, what it says geographically and all of that. So he gives them a context. He says, you know, you look at all these things, this gates of hell will not prevail as the church advances. And so he encourages them to go ahead. Uh, and so uh, we learned a bunch of things. There's a spiritual dimension to it. There's a natural dimension to the church. Um, and um, see, as we progress, right, the content can get a little heavy, a little deep and whatnot. Uh, but what will help as for every subject is that just giving it a quick glance. You don't have to sit and read page to page and whatnot. If you can, if you have the time, great. But then just glance through it. So uh, what we've learned will kind of stay there. So all you have to do next time when the exam or an assignment comes is just kind of glance and you'll understand what it is. Okay. So uh, do that. What we'll do today is uh, we'll start with chapter three. So in the last two sessions, last week we did chapter one, chapter two, um, and today we'll start with chapter three. Okay. So what is chapter three titled as? Oh, okay. Right. The government and the structure of the local church. Okay. So structure, I understand. So first, I was, you know, I started reading this chapter even when Pastor did a sermon series on this in 2014. Uh, on this publication, uh, we we also did this when we went on a mission trip, 2014 to uh, Chandigarh. Yeah, <laughs> there pastor covered this entire thing in one day, I think. Oh no, two days. Yeah, but so structure, I understand. Every, we all understand a structure, right? Now we call a building as oh wow, that structure looks great, uh, or in other words. It, this this is very structured. What does that mean? Sorry? There? Oh, yeah. OK. This order. It's a little bit of American accent coming there. So it was uh, hard for me to. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, order. Order. <laughs> order. Order. <laughs> Yeah, so structure, I understand. Okay, so okay, this has a structure. This program has a structure. And the college, you know, everything is very, you know, in structure. Or uh, what's the song structure? Right, when we learn a song, we kind of put a structure for the song. Okay, intro twice, verse once, chorus twice. 
verse, second verse, and then chorus, bridge twice, and go back to the chorus. That's the structure, isn't it, of a song we, when we learn. We teach about it for in worship team meetings and all of that. What's the structure of the song? How we learn the structure of a song, song detailing, whatnot. So detail, structure. But what's the government? Yeah? Politics. Are we going to talk about politics in church? Uh, <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> right, so a government is what? Yeah, uh, administration? Authority. What comes to your mind when you think? Of... I think that's a wrong question. Well, what comes to your mind first? Because, uh, yeah. yeah. Election. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Leadership. Okay. Nikhil, what comes to your mind when you think of when you hear government? Why are you too much telling what he's saying? Yogi, Yogi, <laughs> Yogi Adityanath. Huh? Yeah. Sure. Sure. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, so political leaders, I mean, so all of the political parties comes to our mind, isn't it? Like, because they, you know, fight for it in the elections and government and whatnot. Okay, but power, someone said power. Yeah, cheer. Yeah, yeah. People in government, one of the, one of the things, yeah, we can uh, think of is power. Okay, authority. They are responsible for the welfare of the society, of community, of the state, or the country, they are responsible. Yeah. You be quiet. <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, so when you, as an administration system, power, there's a sense of, when you say that we use the word administration, there's a sense of structure to it, like order has to be there, isn't it? OK, it's an institution or a system in place or a group of people so let's say one two three four five six seven eight okay so a group of people come together and say okay the it's institution we are going to plan and discuss the welfare of the society or the welfare of this college in a way or in a sense a system or an institution is what is called a government right it could be over a state over a country over uh, an area that's why we have mlas and whatnot isn't it um so we can learn quite a bit. Uh, I think you can accomplish quite a lot when you're organized uh, and structured. Any organized people? Nina says corruption. I, I was just. <laughs> I, I, yeah, thanks, Nina. <laughs> we'll be missing you here in class. <laughs> Sorry, where was I? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, any, any organized people? Who likes to be organized? You like to be? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a difference, isn't it? Okay, there's a difference between liking to be organized and, yeah. The thought of going to the gym and working out is great, but going there and doing it is uh, not happening. <laughs> I mean to clean my room <laughs> for a month now. <laughs> But it doesn't seem to happen, huh? So well, I think uh, in general, uh, when you think about God, God is a God of order, right? Uh, in everything that he does, he's very structured. He's so, uh, he is <laughs> like the standard when it comes to order and whatnot, right? So but what we're going to learn in this chapter is we're going to look at how government or institution or systems and structures uh, kind of evolved over time uh, because what happened when Jesus says the Great Commission right he gives the Great Commission go into you know all the world and preach the gospel teach uh, you know fellowship baptizing them and whatnot he doesn't say how to baptize he doesn't say how to fellowship he doesn't say how to preach he doesn't say how to teach right so that is just before he's ascending to heaven isn't it yes or no yeah, Great Commission is just, Matthew 28 is just before that. And so we know between, from the time he resurrected till the time he ascended, how many days? Ascended and descended. <laughs> what? <laughs> how, many, how many days was he with his disciples after he resurrected? 
40 days. Okay, sorry, I I think I didn't uh, frame my question right. Hi, lovely. It's like, okay, slow claps. So, okay. oh, full Independence Day colors and all. Okay, <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. Join, join. <clears throat> so, from the time he resurrected, Jesus resurrected, and before he ascended, he was with them for 40 days. Now, in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, he says, uh, I mean, Acts chapter 1, verse 3, he says that uh, he taught them or he spoke with them things pertaining the kingdom of God. Okay, so you can just, if you have your Bible, it's just, uh, you can stay in the book of Acts because we're going to go through a lot of scriptures from the book of Acts. Thank you, Nina. Yes, 40 is right. He taught them. So Jesus appeared to them and in in that period of 40 days, uh, in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, uh, can someone quickly read? Acts 1 verse 3, right? Okay. Okay, as long as it's a Bible, it's fine, dude. Right. So he spoke about the kingdom of God. Now, again, it says that he spoke about the kingdom of God. Now, we don't know in detail of all the things that he spoke, isn't it? Yeah. So we we don't know in detail. Bible doesn't record that. It's it's fine. So, but we know that he spoke about the kingdom of God. Um, the left is uh, uh, the le the rest is left to us for to kind of discover and whatnot. So, but what we see happening in the book of Acts throughout as it evolves is uh, first a church being introduced, and then we see all these different stations, different leaders being introduced, and so that's what we're going to learn about in in this chapter. Okay, so once again, uh, as we presented in the beginning of this course, is that this course is not about saying. Uh, for a successful church, you have to do step one, step two, step three, step four. These are the methods. Only if you follow these methods, you'll be successful. You know, you blah, blah, blah. No. But again, as we go through this chapter three, we learn what the New Testament in the book of Acts and, you know, the word of God has to teach. And then we'll see how we can apply it. Okay. Because God expects us to be creative and expects us to be creative in his wisdom, through his wisdom. Can I say that again? He expects us to be, see, we are created, isn't it? Yeah? yeah? Sure, no? 100%. Okay, we are created. That means God is our creator. Creator. We are created. If we are created, that means we are creative. Right? Creator, created, creative. But, now, anybody can be creative. A non-Christian can be creative, isn't it? Like, because we are all made in the image of God. But what makes the difference is when we are dependent on His wisdom. Okay? So that's the that kind of sets us apart. Uh, when we lean on His understanding, on His wisdom, um, you know, in the context of the church and everything related to ministry and whatnot. Okay? So, and I think God knew that, you know, we are going to be creative people because we are made in his image that's why he you know that's why he gave us trees and not tables or chairs right he knew that we were going to make tables and chairs out of this <laughs> isn't it right so that's our approach is again and i like that approach uh is and, it, and it's not spoon feeding it's like okay say ah okay this is how you do you know and I, even when i'm teaching music I don't like to say, okay, this is how you play, you know, the songs, these are the chords and whatnot, but I like the fundamentals of it. You know, he gives us the toolkit. Now you go build whatever you can, isn't it? Right? So you here's the hammer, here's the spanner, uh, whatever it is. Now you go build, you be creative, you see what you can do with it. Right? Um, so that's the difference. So uh, are you all with me so far? All okay? Okay. So... Yeah, he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't necessarily say, "Okay, this is how you have to go and spread uh, the Great Commission or build a local church." Nothing. So let's start looking at the first local church. The first local church. Uh, I'm in your books, but I think it's page 24 in your hard copy, page 16 in your soft copies. 
So the first local church, the church of Jerusalem, excuse me, guys. I forgot to put an airplane mode. So there was only one church in Jerusalem. Uh, on the day of Pentecost, we know what happened. Um, the Holy Spirit falls down uh, like a prophecy being fulfilled from Joel chapter 2. Um, and one of the translations says he came, most of the translations says he came like a... He came like a Santa Claus. So he came. He came like a rushing wind. Right? Uh, the Holy Spirit came. So... The one of the things that Jesus taught them is you stay in Jerusalem, isn't it? We see that in Acts chapter one, verse eight, and you you stay there, right? And and then in chapter two, it goes on to talk about the day of Pentecost. Uh, One hundred and twenty people uh, meet together in the upper room, and the Holy Spirit falls down. He came like the rushing wind. It says, uh, "Now, when 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 is there a rush?" We say, we use words like rush hour traffic, no? Sorry? Emergency, yes. When do you rush? Late for train, late for flight, late for work, late for everything. <laughs> right? You rush, isn't it? Like people rush. Okay, there's a Good Friday sale. It's like full mall is a rush, isn't it? Amazon Prime Day sale, like, you know? So, you rush when you want to be somewhere really urgently or when you want something and you're desperate for it, isn't it? That's when you rush. So when you read the words, like he came like a rushing wind. It says that he wanted to be there more than we wanted him. Right? He came like a rushing wind. That means he couldn't wait to come. Isn't it? Like he wanted to come and fall on the on their flesh. They didn't even know what was going to come. <laughs> Isn't it? So again, we know the story. Um, so Holy Spirit falls on 120 people. You know, Acts chapter two talks about it in detail. Uh, then uh, Peter stands up and gives this famous sermon, and in one day, 3,000 member church is formed. In one day. <laughs> Like a three thousand member church is formed, okay. Uh, and so, what it looks like initially, so there were one hundred and twenty people on the day of Pentecost uh, who recognized the twelve apostles of the Lamb as their leaders. And initially, it seemed like Peter was their, you know, leader and uh, at least one of their main leaders. But then later, we see in in Acts chapter fifteen that Peter moved out. He went out on multiple missionary journeys, and James becomes the leader of the local church in Jerusalem. Now, remember, we are still talking about the local church in Jerusalem, nothing else. Okay, so Peter seemed like the initial leader. Uh, then he goes on to Judea and you know other places. Then the the leadership is seemed to have transferred to James. Now we look at James chapter. Uh, let's James. No, sorry, not James. Acts chapter 15, uh, Acts chapter 15, um, now this context will properly start from verse 13 to 19. You can just mark it, write it down, we are not going to read it. Okay, this is the first local church, guys. Remember, at this point, they're experiencing something for the first time, like they have never before, okay? They have not been taught the subject on the local church. Okay? There was no class. There was no certification course. It's like, okay, please come sit down like this under the tree, okay? This is the local church. This is how you should function. No, they don't have a clue. The first encounter they have is the Holy Spirit falls on them. And what, hap what happens? Everybody encounters Jesus, right? There's, there's an encounter of, that of, you know, with the divine that is happening there. And, and the result of that is, now I'm sure, I'm, I'm just, you know, imagining. If Peter preached, I'm sure there must be other people who must have preached as well, you know, in a different places and whatnot. So maybe not. But 
this is what does he say in Great Commission? Make this up. Okay, in other words, preach and teach. We saw that Jesus didn't necessarily say preach, how to preach or how to teach. But you see the response of the Holy or being filled with the Holy Spirit is that you're filled with wisdom, so he preaches with power and he preaches, right? When you look at, uh, when you read uh, Isaiah chapter 11, right, verse 1 and 2, I think, it talks about the seven spirits of God, isn't it? He's the spirit of wisdom, he's the spirit of revelation, he's the spirit of, you know, he's the spirit of God, he's, uh, he's the spirit who reveals the fear of God uh, and whatnot. So, when Ephesians chapter 5, sorry? Isaiah 11, I think it's verse 1 and 2. Um, okay. So that means Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, when it says, when uh, Paul is saying, be filled with the Spirit. So that means a person who's being filled with the Spirit is the result of all these things. Isn't it? Because you're being filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of power, Spirit of revelation, Spirit of wisdom, and whatnot. Isn't it? And so when these guys were filled, with the power of the Holy Spirit, that means they were filled with all of this as well. Isn't it? And so that gave, that gave him the wisdom of what to say, right? That gave him, empowered him to stand and preach. Yes, uh, without the sound system. Um, and, and without the without you know having any fear to the local you know say the roman empire is still ruling there but he preached anyways isn't it so that is how the local church was born is being filled with the spirit isn't it and now I, so if i apologize for sounding redundant you know again jesus didn't teach us how to preach and teach and whatnot uh, but then what someone said the greatest ex uh, form of influence is example it's not one of the form of examples. It is the, the greatest form of uh, influence is example, right? So they've seen Jesus preach. They've seen Jesus teach. They've seen Jesus pray. The only thing that they don't, don't do is that they don't go to Jesus and say, teach us how to teach or teach us how to preach. May, but they thought, okay, but teach us how to pray. Uh, you know, they... Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that Jesus taught them without teaching them, by being an example, isn't it? Um, so there's a saying in, in the world of uh, the discipleship in, in, in Israel, uh, if anybody is following, following a rabbi, it, uh, it's, uh, what do I say, it's, it's something that's related to their culture, it says, in the dust of the rabbi, in the dust of the, sorry? Rabbi. Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi. What did you say? Rabbi. <laughs> yeah, so Rabbi. So in the dust of the Rabbi, that is, uh, you walk so close with the Rabbi that the dust of his sandals is on yours. And so they've walked so close with the Rabbi Jesus and they've seen everything what he's done. And they, okay, now Peter understands, okay, so this is how he's, it's done. Okay, and now being filled with the Holy Spirit enabled him to preach. Okay, so that is the result. And we see that he was the initial leader. And then we see that uh, the, the leadership goes to James in Acts chapter 15. I would encourage you to read it from verse 13 to 19 later. Um, so Paul also confirms that James is the leader uh, later in a couple of scriptures in Acts 21.8 and Galatians 2.9. Okay, Apostle Paul kind of confirms that also la uh, later. Now, uh, very quickly, um, again, I might, I would have shared this before, but what is the meaning of apostle? Apostle, yeah. It comes from. So it comes from an ancient Greek word called apostolos, means to be sent or the sent one. Okay, uh, send, that's what it is. Okay, who or the one who is sent, the one, uh, the sent one, uh, to, to send, uh, off you go, 
away from that's what it is okay Ap apostolos now uh, it's a roman word as well an ancient greek roman word it was used uh, militarily by it was the ap apostle was the name of the lead ship of the of any army uh, of the roman army for example the roman empire captured israel or jerusalem isn't it they they've defeated the region of you know of that nation militarily they won the battle the war against them after they've won against a region militarily they will send the rome the roman empire will send a fleet of ships okay a fleet of ships to the region that they have won victory over the lead ship of all those fleet of ships was known as the apostle and this apostle ship will carry a what do we say an ambassador or a, or a minister a representative so the sole responsibility of this person is to go to the region that they won militarily and to change the culture to that of rome so when the roman emperor who's that caesar when caesar comes to jerusalem he will feel at home right so he doesn't like he's a king he wants to feel at home home isn't it so and jesus kind of takes that um, and uses it in our context here is the one like we are we are the ones who sent we are the sent ones in other words that it is our responsibility we say your kingdom come your will be done so we change the atmosphere to that of heaven so when the king comes he feels at home because kingdom is two words isn't it king and dominion so when the king comes, he always comes with his dominion, all right? So that's the first local church, uh, the church at Jerusalem. So we slowly see, even though they were not taught properly of how to start a local church, how to plant a church, uh, church planting, etc., etc., and all of that, the Holy Spirit is leading them, guiding them, empowering them, teaching them, right? Shepherding them in so many cases. And, and as they're, I don't really like to use the word evolve, but they're evolving. Uh, uh, yeah, but you know, I growth is another word you can use. It's like you are growing, right? Um, and we have to be very careful. Uh, anything that is kind of growing, it needs to be stewarded well. That's why we teach our children well when they're growing. As they're growing, you start to instill good habits, good manners in them. It's very hard to teach an old elderly person. Who, because they they are set in their ways, it's very hard to undo the knots, right? It's, it's, uh, you know, unlearn. That's uh, okay. Let's not get deep deeper into it. Um, where was I? <laughs> so the church is growing, and it's growing at an exponential rate, right? And one day, three thousand people. And second day, we don't know what happened. Maybe six thousand people were added or whatnot, but growth happens and it's very important to steward it very carefully right that's why sometimes most of the time fame is very hard to handle and especially if you become too famous at a very young age or if you become just too uh just too great uh, before going be, without going through the process uh or the journey uh to that place you don't know how to steward it isn't it right and i can give a lot of examples of many bands there's music as a context because um, where so many young they become too successful, very famous at a very young age, and they don't know how to handle fame, and so they fall apart. Uh, and so anything that grows needs to be stewarded very well, and that's kind of thing what we learned. You know, there would have been some mistakes mentioned, and one of the mistakes led to the led to a word called deacons <laughs> yeah so in acts chapter 6 when you look at acts chapter 6 so initially there were 12 apostles and uh you know that's that's what it, from the day of pentecost there were 120 people they decide 12 apostles and from there when we go to acts chapter 6 we don't see the word deacon used in that chapter or in that verse from verse 1 to 6 but again the deacon comes from the word is a greek word diakonos everybody say diakonos 
What is that? Right, okay. So it simply means helper or a servant. It means helper or servant or attendant even, okay? Deacon board members. Have you heard of that? So I'm a deacon in this church. Uh, it's, it, it doesn't necessarily sound now like a helper or a servant. It sounds like something, yeah, I'm a deacon. Where's my apple juice? Like, <laughs> okay, so, but let's look at that. Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 6. Now, in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, okay, the number of disciples was multiplying. We, know, we don't know, right, at what, what the number is there. From 3,000, chapter 6, it's quite a year gap. We don't know how many... Uh, have grown okay so there arose a complaint against the hebrews by the hellenists gentiles because their widows were neglected in daily distribution daily distribution of food that's what it is okay then the 12 summoned the 12 apostles summoned the multitude of the disciples and said it is not desirable that we should leave the word of god and serve tables serve tables that you know the 12 apostles are saying therefore brethren seek out from among you seven men of good reputation full of the holy spirit and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word and this and the saying uh, and the saying please the whole multitude and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, and Pumba, no, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, and proselyte from Antioch. Awesome names, you know? It's like gladiator movie. <laughs> Whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Okay, so... Like I mentioned, deacons comes from a Greek word diakonos. It simply means to serve, to help, or to attend. Okay, and so how did this come across? Because they were learning, and so they made a mistake. What was that mistake? They got a feedback. Okay, we all get feedbacks, don't we? All love good feedback. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, they felt that okay, a few of the wid widows are being neglected and so the response was immediate okay he's like hey you know what what we, the 12 apostles they come together and say they bring the multitude they say okay um you know we need let's choose seven men it is not uh you know seven men who's full of the holy spirit wisdom whom we may appoint over this business now all they want them to do is what serve what food okay <laughs> If you, if you want someone to, if you want them to serve food, I ask, okay, have you been a waiter? What is your experience as a, you know, have, do, you, do you know how to carry food? Have you done this before? All of that, right? Uh, I mean, but that's, it's not a job interview here. But then, uh, I mean, you might think one would ask something like that. Okay, out of the multitude, out of, I don't even know how, okay, what the number is. Okay, out of the multitude, we need seven people. But the standard is so high. Like, and see, again, coming back to that point is that be of men of good reputation, uh, full of the Holy Spirit, to serve food, to serve one another, to attend, to help. It's amazing, isn't it? Right? Oh, good Lord. What is this? Excuse me. Okay. So seven men were selected and to help with the daily distribution of food. Um, these, these seven men were selected because they met the following criteria. Honest report. That's another translation for reputation, right? Honest report uh, of the person full of the Holy Spirit, uh, full of wisdom. Took responsibility for daily distribution of the food. What, what does it say? In, in verse 3, Acts chapter 6, verse 3, it says... 
uh, whom uh, towards the end it says whom we may appoint over this business what's the business none of your business huh <laughs> right again so let's just get organized okay let's get organized bring a structure in place let's uh, you know address the issue here uh, as soon as possible okay so uh, as i mentioned even the word even if, even if the word deacons is not mentioned in that passage, but later you see Paul using very similar language uh, in his epistles to uh, to Philippi and to Timothy as well. Are you all with me so far? Yeah, so it simply means uh, helps in administration. That's what deacons are for. We'll continue to learn a little bit more about it. Now, even when in, in Jesus' ministry, uh, he multiplied the food, five loaves, two fish. Uh, after he did that, he just didn't say, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I'm going to throw it from the top of the mount, you know, just catch it. Whoever catches it, I'll say, ah, let it go in. No. <laughs> no. It would have been a chaos, isn't it? Now, 5,000 men, we don't have the number of children, we don't have the number of women, right? No. Yet the five loaves and two fish came from a child who was not counted for, who was not even regarded those days. Isn't it? But he made them sit in the group of 50s. Can you imagine? I don't know how many people hungry, hungry people. Okay. I'm not going to give you food. So sitting for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 50. Okay, sit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, Can you just give the food already? But no. Structure was important. Order was important. Administration was important. Isn't it? Um, so. So the disciples have seen all of this, and you know, and they keep learning all of this. Um, let's look at Romans chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. I, it's in the notes, by the way. It's in your book. Uh, I'm in soft copy, page 18. Hard copy, where am I? Page 26, yeah. <laughs> okay, Romans chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. It, it, it talks about Phoebe that, I mean, this portion is just to go on to say that women were also part of, who were also known as deacons, okay? So it rests a lot of discussion or uh, that we can have, okay, should women be part of the deacon board member? Should they be leaders uh, and all of that, okay? So let's rest our case. Romans chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, it says, I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a, a servant of the church in Sencrea. That you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business. Okay, the word business is translated into help, administration, etc. She has need of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. Okay, so business helper. In other words, Diaconos as well. Okay, so she was a deacon. She was, and then Paul is encouraging the church members there is like help her in whatever business that she needs to attend to, whatever it can be, isn't it? Hey, how many of you have gone to youth camps here? Right. So if it is not organized, I know what can happen. <laughs> okay. Some people will given responsibilities if they don't do their job and all. <laughs> so Ravali here. Uh, was the timekeeper. That means, so she, it was her responsibility in one of the youth camps to bring everybody to the hall on time. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying anything else. Okay. So, <laughs> but just imagine. So, just planning for the youth camp. It's not like, okay, everybody who's interested to come for the youth camp, come pay money in the day. Okay. Whatever it is. But no. So, I might be the youth pastor, or I was the youth pastor, but. Uh, the way we planned was, okay, so who's going to take care of the transport team? We need a few individuals who will organize transport uh, and who will take care, you know, tell people, okay, this is where the bus is. This is location one. This is location two. Bus one is going to be in this location. Bus two is going to be in this location. Okay, that's the transport team. We need a team who will take care of the food. That means at the campsite, we need someone who's constantly in contact with the kitchen, asking them, is the food ready? Can we send them now? And serving team. Okay, and then... Uh, what are the teams? Room uh, room allocation team, games team, um, worship team, ushering team. Sorry, ah, decoration team. Yeah. So the thing is, so to make one camp successful, you need 
to come together as a team, isn't it? And so basically, and if it doesn't happen, you, we can't really accomplish anything. And and so that's what this section and this chapter is actually talking about. Um, I need to keep a watch on the time. Okay, guys, let's move on. Okay, so <laughs> uh, deacons were not only responsible of all this administrative works, they were also encouraged uh, to take to partake in spiritual ministry. Okay, so uh, can someone read Acts chapter six, verse eight, quickly? Acts chapter six, verse eight. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So Stephen, who was a deacon or the helper attendant, who was responsible, one of the person who was responsible to serving food was also doing signs and wonders okay so these leaders was not only you know saying responsible for saying okay hey you just do this administrative work leave the spiritual part was no they were encouraged to do spiritual work as well spiritual ministry as well okay so as a result of this new churches were raised now stephen is one of the deacons but everybody else were doing their role as well. They were involved in spiritual ministry as well. Okay, so you look at Philip in Acts chapter 8, you see that uh, a deacon used by God to preach the gospel with signs and wonders. And he also planted a local church in Samaria. Okay, in Acts chapter 9, uh, churches were raised in other regions like Judea, Samaria, Galilee, and Lydda. And then the local church in Acts chapter 11, we see another local church being raised in Antioch. Okay, uh, where is modern day Antioch? Lingraspuram. <laughs> modern day Antioch is south central Turkey. Okay, south central Turkey. So, and all of these new local churches were planted because the apostles encouraged. You know, uh, the helpers, attenders, in other words, deacons. And deacons were not limited to just administrative works. They were encouraged to do uh, spiritual ministries um, as well. Are you all with me so far? Any doubt? Any question? Okay, pardon? So today, the thing has changed. Isn't it? So we're looking at the Bible and how they were selected. What is the meaning of a deacon and why they were chosen for and how they were chosen for, like the criteria. But today, in the modern day, it's a, it has a very different expression of that word deacon. Okay. Um, yeah. So every, uh, every denomination will have their own criteria and how they choose a deacon. But I feel this is my personal opinion. I feel like the significance and or the essence of uh, the meaning of that word is lost. Like with most of the cases uh, in Christian ministry. Okay, which is a sad state of affairs. So, yes, they can be considered. No, so the whole point is, what does that word mean? Like the root word mean it's it's diakonos Greek word. It means helper, attendant, uh, etc. Right? Uh, anyone who's willing to serve. Right. Um, so that is what it is. So, and it's 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 a similar root word for the word minister. Minister simply in its root form means upbearer. Uh, to serve isn't it so minister and then out of that word we get ministry it means to serve people it means for us to be up bearers uh, to people and i'm not surprised why the word deacon is used for the bunch of people initially who had to serve food i'm sure they were cup bearers literally isn't isn't it okay um uh, okay, yeah, we are almost towards the end of time. I'll, I'll, I'll pause here and we'll take a quick break and we'll resume in the next session.